Hello everyone, I'm Teacher Orgas Leonti. Uh, like always, we're painting wets and art supplies. So today we will be painting some fruits. So I thought you would like the subject and it's very easy to do. And yes, it's very easy to sketch and I'm going to walk you through it on how to paint any fruit in a few basic steps. So I'm just going to put my camera around and show you the fruits that I have uh, picked out to paint today using watercolors. So, here are some fruit that I painted yesterday uh, on my Amazon Live with some art supplies. So here we have an apple, a piece of watermelon, and a fig. And today I was thinking of uh, painting several fruit. I hope we have time to uh, see them all. So I'm just going to show you uh, how to do cherries, which is like my favorite uh, to paint and also to eat, by the way. And also, what else do we have here? Um, we have some kiwi, uh, we have some pomegranates, and also uh, some mellow as well. Um, however, uh, some of the fruits I, I've drawn, you know, bigger than the ones that are actually uh, much bigger than the others, but um, that doesn't really matter. Anyway, uh, I'm just going to gather my material real quick. So here we have the water, and here we have our brushes. Some of them we will be using. And, okay, my references, and okay, I'm just going to grab a palette. Uh, maybe some of the new ones. Uh, why don't you guys tell me uh, which is your favorite fruit? To to eat or paint. Okay, so grab this palette. Okay, it has a few uh, colors that would be uh, useful today. I'm going to grab another one that has more more greens. Okay. Let's see. Um, hmm. okay. So those are the new palettes from Zen Art Supplies. So I'm just uh, looking at the back to the colors. So I think maybe this palette will come in uh, handy today. They're small. Oh, hello, Linda. Good morning. How are you? Which one is your favorite fruit? Um, I think mine is mellow and grapes. And we will be painting quite a few today. Um, I think I'm going to start from the from the cherries. Okay. All right. Well, let's grab another palette. Um, no. All right. The Allegro with all the reds. So since we'll be painting cherries right now, uh, that's is the one we need the palette. So I'm just going to mix. A few different shades of red, a deeper crimson one with a cadmium red to create the perfect shade. And like always, we start with a thin wash of color. And then we are going to build up our values from there, all the shadows, the highlights. This way, uh, painting is, uh, is much easier. All right. So as you can see, um, I drew the, the chairs quite big. They're usually much smaller, but I drew big chairs. I think they will look uh, nicer. All right. So as you can see, I let a little bit of the white of the paper to sew. 
um, that is going to work as a highlight later. Okay, so I'm also using my number five score mix brush from the Terran collection from Zenart Supplies. Uh, it's my favorite paint, uh, painting uh, tool when I'm painting with watercolors. Um, I really like the size of this brush. It's not very small, but it's not like a large brush and it has this really nice pointy tip that allows me um, to paint details, but also I can do washes as well. So probably that's why uh, I prefer it. Okay. Just doing a little bit uh, of the wet on wet technique. Just to build up a little bit uh, the values and the textures. And when it dries, we can go back to it and finish it off. Okay. Uh, generally, you will achieve more realistic effects uh, if you are waiting for your layers to dry and then work on the values when, when it's already dry. But what and what technique, you know, helps you to to build up a little bit of the of the depth you want to create. Okay, so now we're painting the stock. Okay. Nice. So this is like the first uh, layer of the cherries. And while we wait for it to dry and finish it off with more uh, details, we're going to move on to our next uh, drawing uh, up here. So here we have uh, the watermelon and I've designed uh, two of them. So here you can see the watermelon uh, sliced in the middle so you can see uh, the texture on the inside uh, and here we will have uh, the outside of it who also quite uh, has quite a lot of that texture. Okay, so I'm taking some of those uh, two greens. Uh, this is a sap green and this is like an olive sage. And I'm mixing the two together in my mixing area on my palette. And I'm just going to start with the mellow that is sliced in half. Okay, and I'm painting a little bit of the outline with this uh, green. All right, and while we still have this green, I'm just going to paint the other mellow that you can only see the outside of it. Okay. We're doing a thin layer here as well. I'm just checking with my reference to see you know where is the darkest bits and where are the more highlights okay so this area is darker so I'm adding a bit more color and I'm also adding a little bit of texture because like I said on the outside it has a lot of texture so I'm just adding some lines And that is going to help us build up our, our texture. Okay. So now I'm just going to mix some more colors. Um, okay, I think I'm going to uh, use this new uh, Gamboge color. I haven't used it before. So I'm opening it now. Uh, these are from the new palettes. I think they just came out comes in our supplies. So let's see this this color. Okay, so I'm looking for an orange shade that isn't like too too dark. All right, I think. If you're not certain, you can have a piece of paper 
and try the color on to see if this is what we want. Uh, so this is perfect uh, shade for what we want to do, okay, for the inside of our mellow. Okay. So we're adding a layer of this color on the inside. Great. And here I leave this oval shape white uh, because here is where uh, the mellow has the seeds and some uh, texture. Okay. And I'm just going to open the brown oxide. Shade uh, that we're going to use. Let's check this out. Uh, so basically, I am mixing this orange uh, we used before with a little bit of this uh, brown oxide. And I'm just going to add a thin layer here. So I'm just also leaving a little bit of the white of the paper because this is going to help us create the texture we want. Okay. So also just going to add a little bit of this color here just to create a little bit of depth as well. Perfect. And around here. Okay, so now let's work a little bit on the outside of the mellow uh, we have here. So here it has like a small stuck and we're adding this and also it has this lines here. The semicycles. And it also has this uh, texture on the outside. So we're adding small small lines and dots here and there, some, some marks. They're kind of random. So it's a random pattern. Okay. So don't be afraid that you might overdo it. Okay. All right. Oh, hello there. How are you? Thanks for joining. So, um, I won't be painting an apple today because I painted yesterday. Um, but I'm going to paint a few more um, fruits that you might like. Okay. So we're adding a little bit of shading at the bottom. Okay, and I'm going to let it dry before I add more details to this mellow. Um, okay. So I think we can go back to our uh, cherries. Okay, just going to move a little bit the light here so you can better same okay cool so now we're going to finish off our cherries and i'm just going to mix this brick side of red with a little bit of brown and i'm going to create a burgundy color 
and that is going to help us with the shadows. So I'm just going to test the color here to see if this is the one. So yes, this is pretty good. And now we're just going to work on building up some layers that are going to give us this uh, 3D effect that uh, we want in order to make a more realistic drawing. So we want some of the underpainting to show, so we don't really um, cover everything up. Make sure you are letting some of these other layers to sew. Okay. And do focus on your reference photo because it's going to help you a lot with knowing where to place your shadows. Okay. So here is like the darkest part, so make sure you focus on this area. But make sure that you won't overdo it. Okay. So all you have to do is like be patient and of course be observant, okay? And always check your reference and wait for your layers to dry before you build up more. Um, this way is going to help you uh, to achieve a more realistic effect without uh, your colors are uh, getting muddy because that can happen when you constantly uh, reapply new layers without letting them dry first. Okay. So I'm adding very little water my brush because like I said I don't want to get them look muddy okay so I'm just going to let this dry for now I'm just not sure if you have like a very good lighting here, so, okay. Right. And also I'm just going to grab some of my jelly gouache um, because I'm going to need it for my highlights. I always use um, white gouache uh, for that. And I like to mix it with my colors. And if you water it down with a lot of well, water, uh, it gives you this watercolor effect. Okay. And also make sure that you have a paper towel next to you so you can either, you know, uh, wipe your brush or you can take out the excess water from your drawing uh, and it helps you correct your mistakes as well. Okay. So I'm just adding a little bit of a highlight here. And 
and I've mixed the the white with a little bit of the red I was using. Uh, because I want to achieve this um, very uh, shiny effect because cherries are very uh, very shiny on the outside. Okay. So you yeah, do tell me uh, which one is your favorite um, fruit. I think it's a very uh, fun subject. And even if you're a beginner, I think uh, you can easily um, sketch them out. They have like basic shapes, so I think it's a it's an easy subject. For most people, no matter your level. Okay, so I'm just going to work a little bit. <laughs> it's nice you ask each other. Uh, I'm just going to work a little bit on my stock and when it dries, just doing a little bit outline here, and when it dries we're going to see what else we will do here. Okay, for now we've just uh, built up some bodies. Okay, so the stock here usually um, is a little bit darker. Okay, so we're adding a little bit of brown. And here as well. And that is going to make it look a bit more realistic. And I would suggest using a ringer brush uh, when you're painting lines like this. It really helps uh, with painting straight or wavy lines, especially if you want them to be to be thin. So, all right. Okay, so now let's work a little bit on our other fruit. Okay, so we have the watermelon. Oh, no, the watermelon, I'm sorry, the mellow. <laughs> okay, so with my ringing brush here, I'm just going to add a little bit of texture by hair. And, okay, I'm just mix a little bit of this orange gouache. And with my other brush, I'm just going to add a little bit of water and blend this color. And that's a way of blending a uh, gouache by adding a little bit of water and turning it into what I call a paint. Okay. And here on the uh, on the middle, I'm just going to take a little bit of white gouache and a little bit of a lemon yellow and mix them together. And we're going to draw a line. And 
and some more lines. Okay. While adding a little bit of highlights here and there. And I'm just going to take this brown we used before. And I'm just going to some texture here. Here we have some some seeds. Okay, they're not that dark but we're using this color in order to create a little bit of depth. And then we will paint the seeds on top. Okay. And we're now we're painting some of the seeds here. Okay. With a little bit of the orange, we're doing a little bit of the outside of the outline. Okay. And here we're going to use a little bit of the darkest shade of, of green, not too dark. Okay, because um, the outside of the mellow is usually a light green okay and let's work a little bit on the outside of the mellow so I'm just taking a little bit of this light yellow um, shade we've mixed before and I'm just adding a little bit of color outside next to the lines uh, we painted before to give the texture Okay, and also I'm just going to take a little bit of brown, mixing it with our green. I'm just going to add a little bit down here in order to create some shadows in here, just for more depth. All right. So we're done with the outside of the mellow and okay, I just need a little bit more here to work on. So I'm just taking a little bit of this color and I'm mixing it with a little bit of white because um, melons on the inside are a bit lighter and I think this is a little bit orangey.
All right. And now let's finish off our cherries and work on our pomegranates and kiwi. Okay. So I'm just mixing again a little bit of the colors. Okay. Just working on the highlights right now. Um, checking with my reference. And now let's start working on our layers here, our pomegranate. Okay, so basically uh, we're using some of the shades we used before for the, for the cherries, but a little bit more transparent with more water. So we have a pomegranate that is also cut in half. And one that is whole. Okay, so we start with this first layer, and here where it has the shades is darker. All right, so I'm just leaving some of the white of the paper to so I'm just creating a little bit of texture here just to give the impression that here are the the pomegranate seeds. I've painted so many pomegranates before especially for my uh, Hades and Persephone painting. So now we're doing it in watercolor and I'm curious to see uh, how this one will turn out. All right. And here is a pomegranate that is on the outside. All right. So we're using a darker shade for that. Okay, so the weather here is like so hot today, so I almost feel like like it's summer right now instead of spring. It's kind of crazy. All right. And here is stalker as well. And the outside layer. where the skin of the pomegranate is like thicker. All right. Oh, hi Linda, just saw your comment. Um, I'm using both watercolor and gouache on the series. Yes, I use mostly um, white gouache and I mixed it with the red of the watercolors I was using. 
uh, in order to make it a bit lighter so I can use it for, for my highlights. So yes, I find it very, very useful to mix both gouache and, and watercolors. Uh, they work pretty well together. Oh yes, I love pomegranate as well. Um, I even like it as a, as a juice. All right, and as we're waiting for uh, this layer to dry, we're going to move on to our kiwi. I, I really like how kiwi looks uh, like, but I think um, I am allergic to it. So I don't know, whenever I have kiwi, um, I'm start, I'm a bit itchy and I'm starting scratching at myself. So yeah. But I think it looks beautiful. So I'm using the two greens, the sap and the olive green. I used before. So this is like watercolor, it's not gouache. And we're doing the um this is what the kiwi looks on the inside basically. All right, so we have like a kiwi that is uh, cut in half. So yes, it's very, it's very easy to design as you can see. And it's also very easy to, to paint with a few uh, thin layers. So if you're a beginner, I think this is a subject that uh, you should try out. Okay, so now I'm just taking a little bit of this yellow ochre and I am mixing it with my green. And here in my palette I have this kind of uh, muddy green shade uh, that we're going to use in order to paint the outside of the kiwi. That has like this texture, it's like hair basically, sort of, it's a little bit hairy. So I'm just going to leave some of the white of the paper to sew um, because I'm creating like this uh, texture here just to give the impression that it's a little bit hairy okay Okay, cool. Now let's do the same to to the other kiwi piece. So we're just feathering out our lines. And we'll leave some of the white of the paper to sew through and that helps us with highlights and with creating texture. Right. And now on the inside is what the uh, the kiwi really looks uh, nice. Um, it has like this um, black seeds on the inside. That makes it look really um, interesting. Okay, so I'm just going to shake some some white, and I'm just going to mix it with a little bit of green. And this color we're going to use here. Okay, I think we need a little bit more white. All right, and I'm watering it down quite a lot just to make a more transparent effect. So now I'm just using gouache. But I've watered it down with a lot of water so it looks more like like watercolor but it's still uh, quite transparent. Uh, like watercolor basically. Okay, so I'm just feathering out some lines just to create a little bit of texture.
Okay. And now I'm just going to mix my colors. So I'm just going to use this green from the new palette from Zenora Supplies. That is a very, very light green and I'm mixing it with this orange yellow shade. Okay. And now we're doing the uh, wet on wet technique basically because our surface is wet from from the previous lines we dragged across. So we want our lines to be not too too thick, okay? Okay, let's let it try. All right. So um, now that it's dry, I'm just going to add a small highlight to my quarter mallow, to my mallow, I'm sorry. Just a small highlight with gouache. And here on the inside, just adding a little bit of small, small dots. Okay, that's better. And here as well, just small highlights, just to make them a bit more visible just to give the impression that uh, that it's shiny. All right, so I think it looks better. Okay. I think I should light up the room a bit more just to see um, the shade better and the the result. Okay. Let's see. Now, okay. All right. So let's work a bit on the pomegranate you light. So Just going to flip brushes and take out the winger brush. And I'm going to uh, create a burgundy shade by mixing a little bit of purple with my brick color. All right. And I'm adding an outline here. Okay. And I'm using the same color to, to create some texture here. To give the impression that, uh, that those are the pomegranate seeds.
All right. Also here are the bolts in my hands. This texture, all right. And I'm adding a little bit of orange there. To this um, side I've mixed before. I'm still letting some of my underpainting to sew. I don't cover everything up. Okay. And so we're letting this dry. I just found this really nice um, side of bread, right? So I'm adding a little bit of color to the seeds. Okay. So we're letting it dry now and we will work on the inside later. Okay, so now I'm just adding a little bit of texture here. And if you saw like my previous um, tutorial, uh, you can turn this beautiful uh, fruits also into, into stickers. Uh, in just a few steps. If you haven't seen that, uh, it's still available and it will still be on on YouTube as well so you can see a way of how to turn any uh, of your drawings into uh, beautiful stickers uh, that you can stick on any surface. All right. Let's let this dry. And finish off our kiwi. Okay, I'm just going to take a little bit of black, black wash. And I'm adding the uh, black sets here, just uh, randomly placed. Great. Awesome, okay. And now let's finish off our pomegranate. 
Okay, so I'm just taking a little bit of this white wash. And add a few highlights here and there. Uh, it's very important so you shouldn't forget about the highlights it really brings the the drawings to life all right great so that was it for today so here are our finished drawings So yes, here is the, the cherry and the mellow inside and out, the pomegranate inside and out, and the kiwi. I hope you liked it. Thanks for joining. Goodbye, guys.